Well, it's raining outside, so I'm going to make the poblano crema sauce, and I'm gonna give you guys the recipe for that. Crema. And three poblano. I think that's a pretty good one. one. Two. Yes, I'll take this one. Three poblanos that I picked up at the store. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wash them off and then I'm going to grill them in about a tablespoon of butter in a frying pan. Well, I've been going into the pan with the tongs and trying to stand the peppers up on the edges so that all parts of each pepper get um, basically scorched a little bit. And as you can see, they're pretty, pretty scorched for the most part. I tried to get it even on all sides. So what you're supposed to do next is you're supposed to wrap them up in plastic or stick them in a bowl and cover it and let them sweat. I'm just going to put the lid on this, turn the heat off, and just let them sweat right in the pan. We've been giving uh, Sierra, the cat, water, tap water from the sink. And I noticed that it has a higher pH because uh, Jamaica changes color. It becomes more of a pinkish color when it is acidic and a bluish purple color when it is more basic and the pH has risen. Now, the water in the Yucatecan uh, area is derived from limestone, cenotes, etc. So it's going to have a very hard water, high pH, lots of calcium, scale, things like that. This dish right here used to look like this. You can see the scale that's gotten on here. So because this is basically hard water calcified scale, to get it out, if you ever get stuck in this situation, just a bottle of vinegar and just pour some in there, swish it all about. It will absolutely dissolve. It will dissolve that right away. It doesn't take a lot of work. You just work it a little bit with your finger or I don't know, got something you're scrubbing with. Whatever it takes, it comes out, I assure you. Sometimes the scale is so strong, I actually see it floating on the top of the water. There's like a white 
film just floating there. It's already starting to, you can see that it's improved. That side versus this side. There you go. If you live in an area with hard water stains and you just sort of occasionally clean with vinegar, you'll get rid of it. I think we're done here. I think we're done here. Not too bad. There's a side by side. Sierra will be quite happy to have her water dish back. I guess I might as well show you how I make my Jamaica as well. You can buy Jamaica hibiscus flowers just about at any produce stand. They're kind of rubbery and soft. They feel like, I don't know. If your fingers could talk, they would say, they feel chewy, okay? And they have a very tart scent to them. You can buy them in bags like I get this from Shidrawi, but this actually isn't even Shidrawi's uh, product. I bought this bulk at Shidrawi with a scoop, and I just reused the, this bag here at home. But I actually purchased these uh, by weight at the produce stand. Let's get making some Jamaica. All right, to this pot, I'm gonna make about one pitcher full, which I think is almost two quarts. I'm gonna add approximately one cup of hibiscus petals. It's about a cup, maybe a little more. Okay, typically I don't do this, but I think today I'm going to experiment. I don't have any cinnamon sticks, but I do have some cinnamon powder, so I'll just throw some cinnamon powder in there and we will cook it with the cinnamon. And we're gonna fill this up with cold water from the getaphone. Maybe not the whole way. This is a larger pot. This is larger than what I normally use. Maybe halfway. And give that a good stir. And it's already, it's already getting a red hue to it. We're gonna let this cook until it comes to a rolling boil. Okay, let's check on these. Oh yeah, so these are done sweating. See how the skin is all wrinkly on them. They're still a little too hot to work with, so I'm actually gonna take them out of the pan now and set them on a dish to cool. Okay, I lied. I'm not gonna set them on a dish. I'm just gonna put them on a cutting board because I'm gonna to have to peel these and then cut them open. Oh man, if you could smell this house right now. If you've never cooked poblano peppers, I, I just, I don't know how to really describe them. They're not like bell pepper. Bell pepper tends to be a very sweet pepper. They're not super sweet, but there is a sweetness to them. And I almost want to say there's a smokiness to them, but I don't know if the smokiness is there due to the way they're prepared or if they actually naturally have the smokiness. But the one thing that I was never really aware of is the fact that you have to peel the skin from these peppers. I didn't know that. I guess if you're eating them raw, um, like a lot of people will with bell pepper and things like that, or they're diced up really small, the skin is not an issue. But in the way we're using it here, the skin is an issue. And it, it can be a very uh, fibrous texture, doesn't digest well, doesn't break up well. So you peel the skin from the peppers. And that's what sweating the peppers is doing. It's helping release the skin. So what I did now is I pulled the tops out. Um, we have to remove the seeds as well, but I thought it would be a good place to get started. And you, you can see this very papery, fibrous skin. You have to remove that. Um, it's a whole lot easier to use two hands as I'm holding a camera with one hand. It's a little harder to do here. But just peel that away. And once you have all of that removed, then you're going to slice open and start scooping out the seeds. I think that our jamaica 
It's not quite a rolling boil, but you know what? It is a boil. So I'm gonna turn off the heat and we're literally just gonna let this steep. I'll put the lid back on and that gets to cool off. Okay, so I've peeled all that skin away right there. And now I'm going to get rid of the seeds. Now you use whatever method is going to work best for you. I, I kind of like using a spoon and just sort of scraping them away. It, it's not perfect. You may have to, again, I'm using one hand. You may have to finger pick some of these seeds out of here. And that's fine. You just don't want the seeds. I don't know what happens if you get stuck with a few seeds. Honestly, we're gonna blend this in a blender. Maybe you won't even notice them. I don't know if they impart a special kind of flavor that we don't want. Get rid of, shake off some of them seeds. I don't know. It's kind of messy. <laughs> it's kind of messy. Trying to get rid of the seeds. If you, if you get some fibrous pieces like this, just pull them out. And whoop, there we go. And here's that fibrous, like I said, if you get some of this, just, just pull it out. I don't know what it does to the pepper and if it even matters, but I pull it out. That is good enough for me. So inside here, I have put the crema and the peppers. The onion, of course, is in the very bottom. And if you've never had crema before, um, it's kind of like a sour cream, but it is not a sour cream the way you think of sour cream if you're not from Mexico. It's um, not as acidic, slightly sweeter and less acidic is mostly what I would say about it. But it's similar to sour cream. We got a little bit of milk right here, leche. I'm just gonna put a little bit in. Doing this right, there we go. Scrape down the sides a little bit. Mmm, that's good. If you can see that it's mixing really well. You may want to add just a little bit of salt, just to taste. I don't put a lot in. I'll start off with a, is this even open? I'll start off with a few shakes and we'll give it a try, see what happens. Taste. A little more. Okay. Perfect. All right, so there's our Poblano crema sauce. I'm going to pour it into a container and keep this in the refrigerator. Um, this will actually uh, get thicker in the fridge. This is really excellent for drizzling on top of anything that you want to eat. You could put it on a salad if you wanted to. You can put it on tacos, burritos, nachos. You can put it on rice, just rice and this cream sauce. You can put it on spaghetti, which is how it was introduced to me. It was a spaghetti dish. This sauce is so versatile and so simple to make. You know, it probably even makes a good soup. I hadn't thought about that. I'll have to look up a recipe about poblano crema soup. I've actually purchased 
pre-manufactured poblano crema soup. I wonder how different it really is. Maybe it's got some kind of stock in it, like a chicken stock or something. But you could probably use this as well with that and come up with a great soup. I think maybe the Jamaica is ready to be strained. It's been sitting here for a while. It's, uh, it's still hot. I'm supposed to let it cool. I'm gonna rush it along just a little bit for the sake of the video though. I think it's fine. It's been sitting here for at least 90 minutes. All right, so I got me a pitcher and just a small, cheap plastic strainer. I'm just gonna pour, and this can be messy, so I'm definitely gonna have a whole pitcher, wow. Now, it has been said, and it is true, you can save these petals and you can put them in tacos and things like that. I'm not gonna do that right now, even though I know it's possible. Right now, my, my goal is just to make some Jamaica. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna put that in here, squeeze out the juice and throw them away for now. Okay. One of the things that I do try to watch is sugar in general. Um, Hamica tends to have a lot of sugar in it and it seems to be really common to have a really sweet Hamica in Mexico in general. I'm going to do this with honey. I got this great bottle of honey that I bought at the Mercado in Valladolid and I'm going to add good amount at first and got this idea from Paulette, from Martin Paulette to Travelers Mexico. And I really like the honey flavor. Uh, maybe just a little more. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I've heard the typical recipes to add about at least a half cup to a two quart pitcher or one cup to a gallon. I would use less sugar than that. I would use probably more like a third of a cup instead of a half cup. There you go, Jamaica. Just stick it in the fridge, let it get cool.